you're all here and uh, still paying attention and uh, ready for a discussion, I hope. So I'll try to be brief. My name is Marietje Schaak. I'm a member of the European Parliament for D66 political party. We're part of the ALDE group, which is a political family of liberal and democratic parties from all European countries. Uh, I was elected in the recent European elections last June after a campaign where we had intense debates and where it was possible to actively crit criticize the government. And uh, I think today it's good to keep in mind that that's actually a luxury that we often forget is one. And uh, I was actually happy with your criticism too because it's good that you challenge us as politicians uh, in what we can do. And so I will share a little bit of what I believe I can do as an individual and what the European Parliament has done as a whole and the European Union's institutions have done. Um, my involvement with the uh, human rights situation in Iran stems from a history of being involved with human rights issues, civil rights issues, and feeling very committed to that issue. And I've once promised to someone who's very dear to me that I would not be a bystander. And um, I try to continue that in my political uh, life. I actually believe human rights are a key motivator for me to do what I do. And um, uh, human rights, and specifically Iran at the moment, are a key focus of what I'm doing. Um, First of all, I would like to thank the witnesses who were brave to share their stories. It's, it's really uh, touching and another uh, motivation and reminder to not forget, to not let down. And I hope that being moved to tears translates into being moved to action because that's really what we need to do. Um, but the two sometimes go together, so thank you very much for uh, doing that. Uh, and I want to thank the organizers for putting us all together. I'm humbled to be part of this distinguished panel. And, uh, yeah, just very special also to meet Shadi Sadr, who uh, I indeed nominated for the Sakharov Prize, and so I feel like we have a connection, and I'm glad that we now uh, have a chance to meet. So thank you, uh, and thank you for offering uh, a moment to look at the European perspective on this, because indeed the different European countries have an active role to play, but there is a lot to be said for a Europe that speaks with one voice in the world, and a European approach to human rights. Uh, Europe is the only continent that does not have the death penalty, for example, and I believe that we have to uh, hold others to that uh, high standard that we enjoy every day. Um, so, um, when um, I spoke at this uh, protest uh, gathering in Amsterdam uh, that was called United for Iran, uh, I met with Shirin Ebadi, and it was a very uh, moving moment and that's where I decided that we needed to uh, do what we could in the short short run to focus on the human rights situation in Iran and one of the opportunities was the nomination to the Sakharov Prize and I just want to explain why I believe it's so important because as Professor uh, Akhavan said as well, uh, on the one hand there are those very visible events such as the uprising against the elections of uh, the last uh, June in Iran that went over the world thanks to new media uh, but on the other hand, they are uh, only building on a layered uh, set of events of protests, of sometimes anonymous and very silent protests that have been ongoing. And one of the striking um, facts in the past summer's election uh, demonstrations were the equal participation of men and women. And uh, we all know that there is no equality between men and women in Iran society today. And so, uh, those who fight for this equality in both criminal law but also in the workplace and in family law uh, deserve all the help they can get because it's only through ordinary Iranians that are sometimes not seen by the rest of the world uh, that are joining forces and that are brave enough to stand up and to continue to stand up that we can actually make a difference. And so uh, this people-to-people -people connection, uh, the European Parliament being the house of the European people and awarding this prize to uh, to a human rights defender uh, in the name of all the Iranian people, I believe was a very um, important way to put Iran on the agenda and uh, uh, is a way to keep it on the agenda as well because we've all spoken about human rights in the Foreign Affairs Committee, in the Human Rights Committee, in the Development Cooperation Committee. So uh, that's the part of the individual commitment that uh, we as European parliamentarians can take. Uh, the All Day Group has a long history of focusing on human rights, uh, equal treatment, uh, particularly to end the death penalty and to end violence against minors, people who are underage, but also violence against homosexuals, standing for free expression of free democratic assembly and uh, equal treatment of women and minorities, which 
are all issues that in Iran are uh, under grave threat, unfortunately. And um, I strongly believe that an act of injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, so that we have to address these issues wherever we find them. Um, and I'm glad to be part of a political family that does. Uh, the European, European Parliament as a whole has taken a heavy interest in Iran. Over the past two years, there have been seven resolutions passed specifically on Iran, and that is a high number uh, in the scheme of resolutions that are passed. Uh, I just want to highlight a few of the issues that are mentioned in these resolutions. One is juvenile executions. Uh, the other one dealt with the arrest and detention of Rexana Sabiri, and the other condemned repression and persecution uh, and threats against Shireen Ibadi, as well as the closure of the Center for the Defense of Human Rights in Iran. Another resolution was passed condemning the repression of civil society movements in Iran, such as the One Million Signatures campaign, and uh, the other was a call to develop proposals and projects that could be financed within the framework of the European institutions and the instrument for uh, democracy and human rights that the European Union has. Uh, and another resolution urged the UN General Assembly to vote on a resolution explicitly and decisively condemning the violation of human rights in Iran. Uh, in the annual report on human rights, there was a uh, significant chapter on Iran. And uh, when we look at the other, the other uh, elements of the European institutions, such as the European Council, Javier Solana uh, has focused on Iran, but has had a relatively more intense focus on the geopolitical elements, such as the nuclear challenge. And that's what I wanted to spend some time talking to as well, uh, because uh, I'm particularly worried that the nuclear issue will be an opportunity for the regime to reunite uh, people because um, even if there's a lot of disagreement and a lot of uh, diversity among the Iranian people, uh, the threat of not being allowed to develop uh, nuclear technology could in fact unite people. And so I want to um, emphasize that I believe that without, with all our diverse views and without agreeing on everything, we should be united on human rights and also try to implement this in European policy. Um, schemes, and so I want to pose two questions and one proposal to you. One is how can we, the European people, and for myself as a representative of the Europe European people, reach out to and strengthen the Iranian people's voices to give them hope and to effectively prevent violence, torture and executions without strengthening the hardliners and the current regime. Um, it's a tool to uh, condemn strength, strongly the uh, human rights violations of the regime, but um, I'm curious what your experiences are and the effect of these condemnations and also the possible counter effect where it strengthens the hardliners in saying, you know, we have to stand up against these criticisms from Europe, United States, etc. Um, and I would like to pick up the glove that Professor Atavan put to me and talk to you about how the European Parliament could most effectively use international justice instruments to um, set in motion the bringing to justice and the end of impunity of the um, current regime against its own people. So I hope we can continue this conversation. And I would like to propose that I work out a um, urgency resolution tomorrow to condemn the uh, possible executions of the three uh, demonstrators that have been prosecuted or are set to get the death penalty, uh, so I can work out an urgency resolution on that to put urgent pressure on the president. <laughs> responses from Europe to uh, Iran to actually reach out to the people of Iran and uh, strengthen their call for democracy and freedom. So, thank you.